evening, everyone. Welcome to Objective-C for Absolute Beginners. We're going to be talking about Chapter 7 in my book tonight. For those of you that are attending live and can hear my voice and see my screen, please raise your hand in the GoToWebinar control panel. Make sure we got everything situated correctly. Great. All right. Um, tonight we're going to be covering, covering Chapter 7 in the book. And of course, um, you can see the past webinars for those of you that are attending live and recorded here. Um, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel and get updated every time I post um, new videos. They're typically once a week. I'll have the schedule posted for March here later on tonight or tomorrow. There will there will not be a um, February 29th. Next Wednesday, we will not be having the class. I'm doing a special two-hour class in my um, Objective C course for my um, Objective C students where we're going to be covering storyboarding in a lot of detail. Um, and so tonight I'm covering chapter five. And uh, for those of you that are, um, one of, are my students, you can um, review the chapter five one hour video. Um, it's class number five that's on the forum for those of you that want to look at the recording. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and um, get through this and talk about what classes and objects and methods and all that does and how it applies in Objective-C. So what I've done is I've written just a little basic Objective-C application that um, starts off with a dog class. And in my interface section, which is um, where we're going to head and define how we're going to talk to our class, here's my name of my class dog. It's typically uppercase. And all classes need to inherit from some other class. At a minimum, if it if there's no other class to inherit from, you should inherit from NS object. NS object um, allows us inheriting from NS object allows us to get all the characteristics of what we need to um, from our the main um, atom object, if you will, um, for class initialization allocated and releasing memory, all that's built into NS object. And so at a minimum, we always want to inherit from NS object. Well, here I've declared four instance variables, also called IVARs. And I have um, several methods down here below. These methods allow us to access these IVARs from another class, these instance variables. Okay, uh, Methods are denoted by the minus in front of them. They come after the, the brackets inside of for our IVAR. Okay, so these are the methods. Methods apply action to our object. All right, so this is our class. In my .m file, dog.m, I define what these methods, I implement what these methods are going to do. So here is set breed. I am going to set the breed name. Um, IVAR variable. So here is breed, let's see, here is breed name. Actually here I changed that. That should be, that should be just breed. I want to change the breed here. Sorry, I changed it to breed in the actual class. I didn't change it back. So here I'm setting my, uh, my IVARs. And down below, I'm returning. I'm getting the information from my IVARs. So this is my main dog class. Well, now that I got a dog class, I want to get more specific. I want to work with the poodle. I want to make a poodle class. Well, my poodle class inherits from dog. So it inherits all the characteristics of dog. It gets all these IVARs. It gets all, access to all these methods. I don't have to declare them. It has them automatically. All right, but I extend a couple more IVARs that are only available to Poodle, not dog. Remember, kind of like um, um, us as children, we inherit the characteristics of our parents, all right? But it doesn't go the other way around. Their parents don't inherit the characteristics of the children. So here we have for Poodle, the size and the length, and we can set the size and the length. Later on, we're going to see how to um, um, how to get away without having to write these what are called getters and setters. We're setting, this is called sets, and the getters, guess what? They typically return a value and, and typically start with the name get, that gets and sets. So a lot of code we're going to learn that we're not going to have to write, but we need to understand the basics of our 
how to access our classes. So let's go ahead and look at our main file here, how we're going to instantiate and use our variables. So here we're going to make a poodle from our dog class called my poodle. All right. This is called instantiation, which is a big word for copying or using our class, allocating, initializing it correctly. And then we're going to set the IVARs for the dog class, our age, our set owner, and our breed. Here they are right here. Age, set breed, set age, get age are all, are all set here in our IVAR. All right, now we're going to make another dog. This dog here comes from dog is my parent as well, but they're two separate objects. They're two separate dogs. Just because if I change the age of one dog, someone's poodle, doesn't mean that my poodle now gets uh, changed to six. They're separate, separate objects. And now we can go ahead and make a poodle. Now you notice here we can set the size and we can set the length and we can set the owner. Well, let's look at the poodle class. You don't see set owner. There's no set owner method when we try to work with Sam's poodle that comes from poodle. But remember that we get the all the properties and characteristics of dog. Well, here's dog and guess what's in dog? There's the set owner. Okay. So here's some of the key concepts that you need to understand with basic object oriented programming. We talked about what an object is, what a method is, what an instance variable or an IVAR is, and then how to set and access those IVARs from our methods. We can't do things yet. We'll learn how later on, but we can't do things like Sam Poodles dot um, age. We can't access those variables directly outside the class, outside of our outside of our class. We will learn how to do things with this notation later with the at property and at synthesize. And I went into a lot, lot more detail in in the actual um, one hour classes. We're limited to about 10 minutes here with YouTube. So for those of you that are attending live, I'll be happy to answer your questions about this particular chapter, chapter mm -hmm. seven or any other chapter in the book. Those of you that are attending and watching on YouTube, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel um, where you're watching this. And if you want to get the past recordings or sign up for the free webinars so you can attend live and ask questions or just watch, just go to and click on uh, the information here for the free webinar. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and conclude the recording here. And those that are attending live, stick around and ask any question that you like. Thanks for attending, everybody.